topic seven from the physics SL uh, syllabus is all about atomic and nuclear physics. And I feel so bad for this little topic because if you look, look how empty this one looks. There's only one equation. If you do the quantum physics uh, option for uh, physics standard level, then of course you get lots of extra equations here. But this is not only a uh, higher level mandatory one, but it's, this is actually one of the standard level options. But if we take a look at this one though, topic seven, all you get is this one. Now, um, this one is a very powerful equation. I think a lot of people, you know, when you tell them about Einstein, they just think, oh, E equals mc squared. But what does that really mean? What does that really do for us? Well, this equation tells us about the binding energy in a reaction. So what this is, I mean, the binding energy is just a definition. That's the energy released when um, an atom is made up from its component parts. So when you actually assemble some sort of atom, then you release energy. Um, and some people talk about that's the energy sort of holding things together, because you can call that binding as well. But the key thing here is that the binding energy, that's going to be E. Okay, binding energy. And that's going to be measured in, well, it could be in joules, but even better, is to do it in electron volts, EV. That's a unit of energy. And again, how can that possibly be a unit of energy? Why would EV, electron volt, be a unit of energy? We can show from uh, topic five. This is exactly this value right here. Multiply one E, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, times one volt. And that just makes this then a unit of energy because that's the same thing as like a kinetic energy. So in this case, just to show you about the units then, so EVs are allowed. Electron volts are a common unit for mass or energy, sorry. So energy is measured in EV. Now M, M is going to be, in this case right here, the mass defect. Because what you're looking at, you're looking at a reaction where you have um, things on the left side and things on the right side, and what you're doing is you're calculating what is the mass of the left side and the mass of the right side. And you'll notice that the mass on the left side is never the same as the mass on the right side. So the missing mass, that's called a mass defect. Now that can have lots of different units. It can be in kilograms. Or it can be in U. And it can also be in MeV per C squared. And you might think that's the dumbest unit ever. Why would I ever use that? Turns out this is probably the most useful. And I talked about this as well in uh, some of the um, uh, classroom videos, where let's say you're calculating something. So you say, okay, we have some reaction, and the mass defect, let's just say, is... I'm just going to make up a number here. So let's just say I calculate that the mass defect is some very small number. Let's say it's 0 0.0314, let's just say. And you're going to be told it's this many U. Now you might wonder, what in the world is a U? Well, you can see over here at the beginning, beginning of your data booklet, this unit for U, this is an atomic mass unit. It turns out it's 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So it's been defined in kilograms, but it's also defined in MeV per C squared. So what this tells you is that this is a unit of mass. Now what you would end up doing with this, I'm just going to do my calculator later, so I'm just going to start it loading uh, while we talk. So I'm going to go back down to where we just were. Here we go. And we were looking at this. Let's just pretend this right here was my value here. And I was curious about, well, what's the binding energy? In other words, you know, what's the energy released when you do this? Well, the energy would be just, let's see, it's got to be mc squared. So I would take this number, 0 0.0314, and I would multiply that number times u. But one u is 931.5 mev per c squared. That's what one u is. And remember, that was just found. I didn't know that. Uh, I just saw it right here. That, that's what one u is. One u is this many kilograms, or it's this many mega electron volts per c squared. Again, you might think, well, why are we bothering with these stupid units? Here's exactly why. Because the energy is equal to the mass. By the way, all this right here, this is the mass, right? Because I've actually just, I've multiplied this number times u. That's just the mass. But the energy is not equal to the mass. Energy is mass times c squared. So I have to multiply this by c squared. And look what happens. These cancel out.
So that means then all I really have to do then is I'll get out my trusted calculator and I can just say, well, what is then the value for this? I can calculate it easily. I just say 0 0.0314. I multiply that by 931.5. Press enter. And I get an answer of 29 uh, point, let's say, 2. So let's say it's just 29.2. Um, so I need to make sure I get my right pen. There we go. So that means my energy then is just going to be 29.2 mega electron volts. That's awesome. This is already a unit of energy. So what some people do is they like to just convert everything to joules, and you're welcome to do that. It's just that sometimes it's time consuming. And on a test or on an exam, you're easily allowed to leave things in MeV. That's mega electron volts. Or just write it in EV if you want. Right, that would just be 29.2 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. But that's the same as saying 1 mega. Well, 29.2 mega electron volts. So you are allowed to leave units like this, and I think that's really helpful. So this E equals mc squared, which most people know about uh, just because, oh, they think Einstein, oh, E equals mc squared, this now tells you a lot of powerful stuff. This says, well, whenever you have a reaction, a nuclear reaction of some kind, either fission or fusion, you end up releasing energy. And this is very powerful because this tells you all about how stars work, for example. Inside our sun right now, there is this reaction happening, you know, millions and millions of times per second. Every time you make um, a new helium atom from these hydrogens that you're converting, because that's what a star does, it converts hydrogen to helium. Um, well, during its main sequence at least it does that, which ours is doing, then you end up with energy released. And that energy comes in the form of, well, heat and light. That's why we're very happy to have our sun working properly, because it gives us lots of nice, lovely light. So this reaction that's happening, well, if we could just calculate what was the binding energy, in other words, the energy released every time you, know, you have your hydrogen making helium, and you looked at the left side and the right side of that equation, and then you got some sort of mass defect. It'd probably be different than this number, but it's the same idea behind it. You just multiply that number times 931.5 mega electron volts per c squared, because you have to multiply by c squared. Units cancel out, and you get something in MeV. So this helps a lot, I think, for understanding how stars work and how nuclear reactors and fission and fusion works.